Hello, and welcome to this episode of Google Developers Live. I'm Sarah Maddox from the Google Maps Developer Relations team. In this video, you'll learn how to add a place autocomplete widget to a map created with the Google Maps JavaScript API. I'll also show you how an autocomplete widget can be useful even without a map to autofill an address form, for example. So, let's take a look at it in action. Autocomplete gives your applications the type ahead search behavior of the search field on a Google map. Start typing something into the address box and Autocomplete supplies predictions. You can configure the autocomplete widget to return specific types of places, geographical places like towns and cities, or establishments like pizza places, or regions and other geographical areas. If no type is specified, the widget will return all types. If you haven't already seen our videos on getting started with the JavaScript API, now is a really good time to watch them. So let's get started with the code. If you've created a map before, you'll recognize this as the basic JavaScript used to create a map. Place Autocomplete is part of the Google Places library, so our first step is to add the Google Places library to the JavaScript API. There are a number of libraries that provide additional functionality for the JavaScript API, and one of them is the Google Places library. So to add a library, include a library's parameter in the JavaScript API loader. Here I've specified libraries equals places. Autocomplete adds a text input element to your page and responds with predictions when the user types into the text box. So we need to define an HTML input element of type text. And next we can set some options for the autocomplete widget. So I decided to use a default area for the search conducted by autocomplete. To define, define the area, I've created a lat long bounds object. It defines a rectangle on the earth by setting the latitude and longitude for the southwest corner and for the northeast corner of the rectangle. The autocomplete will bias its search to this area but not restrict the results to that area. I've decided to bias my search results to an area in Sydney, Australia. I've also created a variable which I've called options that contains the bounds object. Now we hook up the HTML input element as a variable and add some magic to push the autocomplete widget onto the map canvas. And finally, create the autocomplete object, passing it the input element and the options object. Let's take a look at the autocomplete op uh, widget in action again. So one thing to note is that by default, Autocomplete will automatically determine the user's location by looking at their IP address and will bias the search results to that location. You can turn off this location awareness by setting the bounds to encompass the whole world. Use bounds of minus 90, minus 180, and 9180. You can also set the bounds to the browser's navigator.geolocation object. And there are other options that you can use to customize the autocomplete widget. The details are all in the documentation. Here's a hint. You can use the geocoding API to find the latitude and longitude coordinates of the location you have in mind. So here's a link to the geocoding API documentation. OK, let's think outside the map. How about using autocomplete to autofill an address form? There's a really nice example in the documentation, which I'm just going to show you quickly, and you can come along later and have a look at the code in more detail. Here's my address form. Start typing the address where it says enter your address, and autocomplete supplies the predictions. When I select one of these predicted places, the JavaScript I have takes the uh, user's get place to retrieve the information retrieved from the Google Places services and puts the address into components on the form. 
Let's take a look at the code for the address box by scrolling down on this documentation page. We've supplied the code after the sample. So we use get place to get the information about the place, including the address. And then we take each element of the address and parse it and put it into the form. When the user selects a place from the list, information about the place is returned to the autocomplete object and your application can grab that information via get place and use it to populate the fields on your form. So as I said, you can come to our documentation and have a closer look at the code and the address form in action. What about styling? You can style the autocomplete dropdown to suit your own branding or site design. So let's see a simple example. In this example, I've colored my autocomplete box a nice burnished yellow and styled the drop-down to match. So that's a really simple example of styling. The documentation has all the details about the CSS classes that are available. Let's have a look at the CSS that I used. So I've just styled the pack container class and the documentation describes all the other classes available. If JavaScript isn't your thing, or if you're working on a mobile app, have a look at the Google Places Web Service 2. What we've been looking at is the, the JavaScript library. I hope you've enjoyed this video from Google Developers Live.